so you can't really tell on camera, but in real life, my face is a completely different shade to my spray tanned body. I didn't realize until I tried to take a selfie and realized that I looked like something white and orange, a snowman! Just imagine that my whole body is a snowman's carrot nose and my face is the rest. It doesn't really work, but you get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, it's a lovely day, the sun is shining and everyone is happy. So what better time is there to talk about My Chemical Romance? This video has been a long time coming. Um, I first came up with this top 20 list when I was on tour. I was sitting in a van, kind of bored, and I thought, I'm just gonna, I'll just do it for MCR. So without further ado, here are my top 20 MCR songs. A quick heads up, uh, surprisingly, actually, I was shocked too, none of these songs are from their first album, Bullets. Please don't be offended because I was also shocked because I love that album. But I would like to state for the record that Head First for Halos is definitely worthy of an honourable mention. When I was 13 and a true edgelord and dreamed about taking drugs, that was my song. I don't... I don't know what that... Number 20! In a number 20 we have You Know What They Do To Guys Like Us In Prison. It's a great song. All of these songs are great songs. Take a shot every time Emma says it's a great song or it's a bop, or it's a banger, or I mention the instrumentation, don't do it, you'll die. You know what? It's it's, it's a banger. It's, it's a bop. It's got great instrumentation. It's just a great song. The keyboard throughout the verses just creates this really nice sort of haunting, but also jovial, bouncy vibe. And then you have that really menacing lead guitar over the top. And then you have Jared just screaming about stuff. Gerard, sorry, that's gonna be a thing. I have a friend called Jared. And I always call him Jared because it's just, that's how he pronounces it. But it's Gerard, isn't it? It's Gerard way. I apologize. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch between the two. S suck it the fuck up, okay? Gerard pretty much sings what it's like being in prison and being terrified of people who are gonna who are gonna wail on him or something like that. At least I think so. I haven't really analyzed the lyrics since 2005, but it's it's a really really good song. I was really put off by that taxi, I'm sorry. It's a great song, it's a bop, it's a banger, it's great. Also, shout out to that little tiny giggle that Gerard does in the second verse. You know, when they're talking about push-ups in drag, it's a great, just a little, little moment that really adds to the song. Everything adds to the song. That's what makes it the... Number 19, number 19 is The Ghost of You. Now, I remember, I vividly remember being either, I was like 13 or 14, and I'd just fallen in love with MCR. I had, Gerard all over my biology textbook, just pasted in. My uh, biology teacher hated me for it. She was scared by the man with vampiric makeup on his face. But when I had my massive, massive, huge crush on Gerard in 2005, he had like my length hair, it maybe just a tiny bit longer, and it was like jet black. He had like red eye makeup. I once tried to do that with lipstick and blend it out. It looked horrific. But I remember when the Ghost of You music video premiered and Gerard cut his hair for the video, they all did. And I just freaked out, I hated it. I hated it, Gerard wasn't this really cool vampire boy anymore. I don't know why I keep saying vampire, he wasn't a vampire. He wasn't this really cool emo boy anymore and I was really sad about it. Um, that's my most vivid memory of that music video. It's a great video, it's still a really, really good video. Doesn't Mikey, I'm not gonna spoil it if you haven't seen it actually, but yeah. It was, it was a really good video, but the song itself, for me, like, the verses are kind of, you know, give or take sometimes, like, I'm not, sometimes I don't really vibe it, but the chorus is so big. Oh, that's another one. Take a shot every time I say it's a big chorus. I'm a sucker for a big chorus, man. I can't help it. But it's really slow. The guitars are really driving. It's like a massive wall of sound, but it's also got such a slow tempo that it really, really hits home. It's like, at the end of the world, all the last thing I see you are. And then it kind of picks up a little bit just through Gerard's singing. It's like, never coming up. It's like the chorus gets faster, but it doesn't. It's just the vocal style and it's very good. By the way, I'm not very good at singing MCR songs. So that's, that's something you have to look forward to. Number 18 is Teenagers. Oh, look at Emma going for the singles. To be honest, I was actually really shocked that this made it in there because I don't ever really choose to listen to this one. You know, there are some songs you just, you know, you skip on an album and this was always one of those songs that I skipped. So I don't really know why that's in there, but it is, it's a, 
It's a great song. As if like Black Parade didn't have the newspapers scared enough. Like teenagers came out and um, all of the big newspapers like the Daily Mail, they won on this massive, some of you guys won't remember, but the Daily Mail created this massive hate campaign against Micah McGromance saying that they were um, convincing teenagers to, trigger warning, kill themselves and trigger warning, self-harm. And, and that they were evil and they must be banished. You know, the same thing that, that the media did to Marilyn Manson back in the day, they started doing to MCR. And when this song came out, um, just the mainstream media was just like, they're trying to get teenagers to rebel. And uh, and then there was a teenage sort of protest rebellion um, where people went to London and burned the Daily Mail. That was the thing that happened. I didn't go, but that's not related. I'm sorry, I've got a lot of memories. Uh, concerning MCR. Not many of them are to do with the music, apparently. Fight the Daily Mail! Fight the Daily Mail! They are not emo, they are rock alternative, whatever they want to be. Number 16 is The Only Hope For Me Is You from uh, Danger Days. Not too many songs in Danger Days made it on this list, but this is a really... You know what it is? That beginning bit? Yeah, I'm gonna get a copyright strike for that. But it's so cool and it's like, remember me, remember me. It's, it's a great chord progression. Um, and it's, I don't know, they, MCR kind of had this nice, it's not rock opera, but the Black Parade and Danger Days really told a story and that was put forward with the music. You know, the first two albums were kind of just, they weren't concept albums, but the, the, the last two kind of were, kind of like Muse, in a way. But this, this, I don't know what I'm even trying to say anymore, it's hot and I like the song. Number 15. Number 15 is Sing. Uh, why is Sing on there? I will be honest, I don't really like the chorus of Sing. I think it's quite lazy. Sing it for the boys, sing it for the girls. Even though it's big and it's kind of operatic, it's, it's still a bit... Eh. But the verses for me are really great. You got that great little piano bit. It's like din 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 din. It's really simple, but it it makes the song feel really important. If you watch a music video, then it ties in very very well with that. I feel like I feel like MCR they they wrote these songs with the image of Danger Days in mind, perhaps? Like, they knew the characters and they knew the music videos they were gonna make, at least it seems that way. This is a song that you can imagine sort of going into battle with, you know? It's 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 got this striving, building, epicness to the verses. And then I suppose, like, the chorus is a kind of big, but again, I can give or take those. This is gonna be a long video. I'm so sorry. It's been a while since I made a top 20. It's been a long, it's been a long time since I made a video, so I'm just making the most of it and just rambling. Number 15 is Cemetery Drive. Don't know why I said it like that. That was very main channel Emma Blackery. Cemetery Drive. Ugh. So on Three Cheers to Sweet Revenge, which is the album that this song is from, um, the song before that is um, what's it called? It's like it's not, it's not a fashion something. It's a death wish. It just completely skipped my head. What the fuck's that called? It's not a fashion statement. It's a death wish. I see. It's been like. 15 years, shut up. But that song was really, really big and really hectic and really rushed. Um, same with like, Thank You For The Venom and Hang Em High, which are also before Cemetery Drive. But then Cemetery Drive comes in and then it's just, it starts on these drums and it's almost like a second interlude because it takes you out of that moment. The verses are really low. Um, Gerard is, is almost whispering them. You've also got this like toll of a bell, you know, cause you're in a cemetery. This album was really, really thought out with the, the you know, the, the prison one with the giggling, the prison one. You know what I'm trying to say? It's hot, shut up. And like the bell, it was really, really well produced and really well thought out. And this song, for me, is one of the highlights on Three Cheers. Because that chorus is so different to the verses. It builds out of nowhere. Basically the verse is so low and almost whispered, and really soft, especially the second verse. And then you have this really big, fast chorus, just like in the songs before, and it's, it's, oh, the first, the, the difference between the first chorus and the second verse, where it's really hectic, and then back down to chill, it, it pretty much fucks with your head, and it's, it's, it's a really emotional song. And number 14 is dead, exclamation mark. 
it's gonna get copyrighted. You know what, this whole video is just invalidated for me. Um, it's so boppy, it's so good. Oh, you know what, Dead is, it's, it's such an upbeat song. And yet it's about death. Um, I like those really, really happy songs that are actually sad. Probably why I like 21 Pilots a lot. It's essentially the first song on the Black Parade because you have the end, which is at the beginning. It's like a, it's like an intro, like introduction kind of thing. I was gonna say interlude, intralude. Dead is the first like full length song. This song is so well produced. The bass in this song is really great, especially in the verses. Listen out for it. Then you just got the face melting solo, which of course is just great. It's so good. Ray is great. Hey, Frank's great too. You know what, they're all, they're all great. Down your drinks. And number 13, if I can count, is I Never Told You What I Do For A Living, which is the final track off of Three Cheers. What a song to end an album on. It's, you know, every single MCR album has an amazing final song. But really for me, what really solidifies this one as uh, being good enough to be in my, my prestigious top 20 is just that final chorus as it all rings out and Gerard keeps singing. Before that ending, Gerard actually sings that uh, previously in the song and it's used as a build up before things get really, really hectic. <laughs> So, this song is just so good. I can't play you too much, but th that is just before like the whole thing just explodes and it's, it's a great song. <laughs> so it's a bop. And number 12, we have To The End. To The End is just, it, it has no intro, it just starts. It's just manic from the beginning. I don't really know what it is about this song I like so much. I think it's the verses because uh, they're just sung so quickly. And uh, the chords, I I think it's all in minor, I think. At least a lot of the songs in minor. It just makes the whole thing very fun to listen to. And just for once, I like the verses and the choruses about the same amount. And number 11 is Destroyer. I feel like Destroyer was a really, really overlooked song from Danger Days. It was very close to being my favorite song on Danger Days. The percussion in this song is absolutely great. The pan flutes, or you know what, I might be completely wrong. They sound like pan flutes. They're probably not. The instruments at the beginning, you know, it's it sounds very, it sounds like a battle cry. And I think that's exactly what this song is. It's like a call to arms. And oh, do you know my favorite bit is, uh, I think it's after the first chorus and you have this panning of Gerard being like, ah, 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 ah. It's, it's really, really great. Again, this is a song where I absolutely love the verses and I absolutely love the choruses of Destroyer as well. Gerard's vocals really elevate it to make it a huge chorus that's separate from the huge verses. And I've also got this really, really weird vocal effect where it sounds like Gerard is, is possibly doubled. It's not like a massive chorus of voices, but his voice is, is really prominent, but it doesn't sound like there's loads of them. It's a very clever technique and it's, it's just, it really makes the song sound out, stand out. Stand out. And number 10, we're into the top 10. That was cheesy, sorry. Number 10, we have Disenchanted. For a long time, I stopped listening to this song because when it first came out, this was the one that I had on repeat uh, a lot from the Black Parade. To me, this is a song about somebody looking back at their life and thinking it wasn't that great. You know, having a lot of regrets. Perhaps I'm completely wrong. If I am, feel free to tell me, as you always do in the comments below. But the instrumentation, take a shot. Plus those, those the, the violins at the end of the song, when it all fades out, and it just, just goes back to the acoustic guitar, and, and the fade out of the violins. It's so beautiful. This whole song is beautiful. The choruses are massive. To me, like, the Black Parade was like rock opera, you know? Um, it told a story, it was huge, it was emotional. And to me, it was more operatic than Muse. Because um, everyone always says Muse is like an opera rock band, but that's just because of the way that Matt Bellamy sings. But, but the actual um, production of these albums makes it way more operatic to me. But Disenchanted is a great song. Um, 
obviously. It's a bop. It's a banger. And number nine, we have Cancer. I didn't actually listen to this one too much because it was just so sad. There's only so much sad that a depressed 13 year old Emma could have. 15, 14 going on 15. That's a long time ago. But it wasn't actually until 21 Pilots did a cover recently, which by the way, is great. That's not even a debate we're having. It's an amazing cover. It wasn't until that came out that I went back to listen to the original and it made me realize just how powerful it was. Cause like obviously the whole album was a concept album of a guy uh, passing away from cancer. And this was a very on the nose song about a guy talking about dying from cancer and how he's on his deathbed and he doesn't want to say goodbye to people. It's just so, so sad. Which version do I prefer? Well, let's not start that flame war today. And number eight is a song called Blood. Blood was a hidden track on the Black Parade. It's actually one of their shorter songs um, and it's, it's just played on piano with Jared's vocals over the top with some great processing. It's, it's a happy, but also very macabre kind of song. And it's, it's, it's so delectably evil. It's got everything you could want from a song that's supposed to sound like it's from like a 1940s horror film. That's exactly what it does to me. The piano that's being played. It sounds like it would be over the top of a silent film, you know, uh, but perhaps that's just me. But um, there's this really nice little effect that I'm gonna try and find. The doctors and the nurses, they adore me so but that, they've got that little, nice little ghost going, ooh, it's fucking stupid, but I love it. And then of course you got the best, you have the best bit of the song, which is probably one of my favorite lines of any song ever. But it's really quite alarming, cause I'm such an awful fuck. And then you have this like giggling and it goes back into the chorus. It's such a good song, ah. Oh. I love it, and that's why it's this high up the list, but there are better. Number seven is actually two songs. I'm kind of cheating a bit, but it's also kind of one song because one fades into the next song, but I didn't want my Spotify playlist to have 21 songs, so I had to just count one, but it is, of course, Look Alive Sunshine followed by Na Na Na. I can't believe they have a song called Na Na Na. Um, I've never said that out loud before, have you ever said Na 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 by MCR out, out loud before? Because I haven't. They have a song called Na Na Na. But anyway, um, I couldn't just count Na 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 on its own because the intro uh, is also the intro to the album Danger Days and it's, it's just huge. And it's, well, it's not even huge. It builds, but it's, it brings so much tension. It starts on like um, you tuning into a radio station, but it's, it's the perfect song to, to go out and just get ready to punch someone too. I'm not saying you should go and punch someone to this song. I'm sure they wouldn't want that either. Oh good, one of my neighbors is sorting their bins out. Why are you doing it at 6 p.m.? We'll never know. 109 in the sky, but the pigs won't quit. You're here with me, Dr. Death Defy. I'll be your surgeon, your proctor, your helicopter. Pump them at the slaughtermatic sounds to keep you alive. A system failure for the masses, anti-matter for the master plan. Louder than God's revolver and twice as shiny. This one's for all you rock and rollers, all you crash queens and motor babies. Listen up. Oh, so good. I will be honest, when Danger Days came out, I was definitely past my MCR obsession phase. That was definitely more Three Cheers uh, and Black Parade, mostly Three Cheers. Um, I did kind of, I, don't, I do not want to say I grew out of MCR. I would simply say that my music tastes kind of evolved and changed a little bit, but Danger Days was a great album and I'm still a complete sucker for that intro because it's so good. So at number six, we're going back to the Black Parade with Famous last words. Now again, this is another track that finishes the album. And I would say out of all of the uh, album endings, this one is my favorite. It starts off with this urgency. The chorus of this song is so big, one of the biggest. And I know I keep saying it, just keep down in the shots, but I'm a big sucker for big choruses. And this is probably one of the biggest choruses. Obviously there's a few more big choruses on here, but this is just, if you took the Black Parade as a rock opera kind of thing, this is the best finale. 
this is the way to end it. The choruses are amazing, and then this final chorus, Gerard does this really high note over the top. It's like, ah, he does it better than me, obviously, but it, it elevates the final chorus. Take a shot every time I say elevates a chorus, but it, it just, it takes it to a higher level. And also, I'm a massive, massive sucker of the way the song ends. It just ends. I love songs that just cut like In at number five is I Don't Love You from The Black Parade. It's just an amazingly good pop song. Um, don't be fooled. I know, I know that many of you are not stupid and you know music theory. Um, but just because a song has guitars in it and just because it's by a band that has done other genres doesn't mean that they cannot release a pop song. And I Don't Love You at the core of it, fundamentally and just musically, I Don't Love You is a pop song. It's got a perfect structure, it's got a wonderful tempo, catchy choruses, a very simple beat, but it's 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 a wonderful, wonderful song. Fun fact, uh, me and my friend Arthur have been planning to cover I Don't Love You for I would say at least two and a half years at this point and we just haven't, we just haven't got around to it, but maybe one day we will cover it for your listening pleasure. It was actually, uh, I think, one of the first MCR songs that I learned to play on guitar. So, there's that too. So in at number four, do you know what? I probably pronounced this wrong as well. Um, it's Helena. Some people I know say Helena. Maybe it's Helena, I don't know, but um, Helena. It's, it's, an, it's an amazing song. And also, fun fact, I named my second hamster after this song. I had an albino hamster called Helena, or Helena. Helena, I called her Helena. If she bit me, and uh, that was my third hamster, yeah third hamster. She wasn't nice. She wasn't a nice hamster. I'm not saying there's a correlation between albino hamsters and evil hamsters, but I've had one albino hamster and one evil hamster. Oh no, I've had two evil hamsters. There was a dwarf that I had. There was my second hamster called Charlie, named him Charlie after Charlie from Busted. Don't tell him that. Um, he was evil too. Yeah, it's not, it's not an albino thing. There's very little that needs to be said about this song. Everyone's heard it, everyone knows it, it's one of the most famous ones by them. Just because it was a single doesn't mean that you can't like it just as much as album tracks. In fact, as I said before, record labels decide which songs are the most catchy, are the ones that should be, you know, radio playable, so therefore they are the singles through science, through the magic of musical science. So you should actually like the singles more, but because they get overplayed, you think, oh, I prefer this one, when really, if it was an album track, you'd love it more than the others. Does that make sense? Oh good, the sun's gone in. It's just realized we're talking about MCR. Helena has an incredible music video. I have another story, but I don't know if I can be bothered to tell you. I will tell you in another top 20 that is coming up soon. And by soon, I mean probably like a couple of months. And it's related to another band, but I'll tell that another time. It has an incredible music video. Didn't really make much sense, really. The, the dead girl got out and spun around and danced. I don't really get that. I don't really, you know, I'm a sucker for symbolics and stuff and, and metaphorical shit, but even then, it doesn't really make much sense. She was dead. Perhaps it was like her spirit passing on. It still doesn't make sense, and it's been like 12 years. 12 years! At number three, uh, wait, 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 wait. 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 There you go. You just gotta play a G note and you know what song it is. Because again, regardless of the fact that it was a single, regardless of the fact that the Daily Mail started a hate campaign because of this song, regardless of everyone, including myself at the time, who said, oh no, what is this? Why have they changed so much? Welcome to the Black Parade is one of the best songs of all time. It's I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there. You can either take it or, or throw it away, this comment. Oh, this is gonna be controversial. Welcome to the Black Parade is the Bohemian Rhapsody of our times. I'm not saying that ironically. I'm not saying it because, you know, oh, memes. I'm saying it because genuinely, this song was fucking incredible. And it was huge and everyone knows it. It was 
operatic. You know, it was it was such a change from what they did with their second album. And I remember, and you know what, I'm fine with admitting it now, because why not? It leaked online, there was like a little, uh, a little MCR fan site that got this leaked MP3 version. And it was really like low quality. But I remember clicking on it and hearing it for the first time. Um, and just waiting for this amazing like three cheers style song to come on and then piano and I was like what? Luckily I uh, I quickly realized that I was being stupid because this to me was their Magnus magnum opus mag mag the one that's the best it's not magna carta that's a piece of paper magnum opus it is magnum opus, that's the one I meant. A work of art, music or literature that is regarded as the most important or best work that an artist, composer or writer has produced. It is an amazing song. I don't need to say anything else because you've all heard it and you all know how amazing it is. The verses, the choruses, the instrumentation, the lyrics, the vocals. It's all incredible. But it's only number three. What the hell, Emma? I mean, being realistic about it, we have two songs left, one of which was obviously huge and one of their most well-known which hasn't been mentioned yet and it will be mentioned but the other one is one that not everyone will have heard before but for some reason it really struck a chord with me <coughs> sorry and actually that is the chord that it starts with desert song was a additional kind of bonus track to life on the murder scene which was a cd slash dvd combo that you could get just after Three Cheers came out, and it is such a spooky song. It's it's produced really strangely, as though it was meant to be like a demo that they did. But it, it I, I can't really describe it. Gerard's voice on Desert Song is probably, it's, it's one of his best vocal performances for me. Uh, he's got so much rasp. It's not full blown screaming, but he's got some, it's something, he's got something stuck in his throat, man. But anyway, it sounds great and it's a really, really good song. Uh, it's a great song, it's a bop, it's a banger. I will let you find it if you haven't already heard it, which if you are an MCR fan, you should have done. But I realize that not everyone will have heard that song, but it's one of my favorites. And um, I don't even really know why. I think one of the most interesting things about it for me is that it's led by the acoustic guitar, um, just chords mostly. Um, it has no drums on it. It's got like some, midi kind of strings on it. It's also got Ray's uh, lead electric guitar over the top, but no percussion, no bass. It's very odd, um, but it makes the song sound very different to any other ones I've done, and I really like it, and I'm gonna stop saying that. So Emma, what could be number one? If I were to make a video about songs that summed up my teenage years, I think I've already made that, or something like that. If, if I had to make a playlist on Spotify for my teenage years songs, my soundtrack, um, and then had to make a video about it, like this, this song would be number one on there as well. Because this is the song that I played the most throughout my teenage years. Throughout from like 13 to 19, this is a song that I played the most amount of times. So much so that my Three Cheers CD, which I had uh, on top of my CD player all of the time. Yes, we listened to CDs in 2005. We didn't just buy them to stick on a wall. My Three Cheers CD was so scratched that if you flipped over to look at yourself, you couldn't see yourself anymore. In the end, this it's the to this day, Three Cheers is the only CD I've ever owned that um, actually died. Like, I could no longer play it. It became unplayable because it got so scuffed and so played over and over, it just wouldn't read it anymore. I've never had a CD that's done that, ever, apart from Three Cheers. The song is obviously I Am Not Okay, I Promise. That's obvious, didn't even need to tell you the title of it, but there you go. The music video was the best. I had the biggest crush on Gerard, and I thought he looked super cute in a school uniform because I, I went to school and I had a school uniform and they would have been so cool in school. It was a really funny music video and the song itself, do I need to explain it? There is a reason that it was so big because it's the best. The little trust me bit, I mean, you know, the other songs I can kind of talk about as though you'd never heard them, but I know you've heard this one. It's just the best. It's actually one of my favorite songs of all time and um, my dad actually had to scream from downstairs to my bedroom when I was 13, 14, because I had it on repeat for hours 
every day and he got so sick of it. If you asked him on Twitter or tweet him being like, do you remember this song? He will tell you that I had this on repeat every day, like religion. Like, like it was my religion. You don't have re religion on repeat. I suppose you do if you're religion, if you're religious. <laughs> Just go listen, I'm not okay, I promise, all right? Now, if you don't mind, I have to go shopping with Lily for some Swedish furniture. So until next time, guys, I shall catch you later. Bye, Magnetize on iTunes.